All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is day two, which is day one of racing. We have a warm up, qualifying, pre final, and final. <coughs> so that's how the day is going to go. Um, I'm going up right now, uh, 7 45 early morning. Uh, track's not going to be anything that was like yesterday, and these tires are done. So it's just to go out there, see how the cart feels. Uh, not do any changes for qualifying, slap on the new tires, and hopefully I pick up a second. <laughs> I'm not asking too much, I guess. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, guys. Uh, love seeing you, love uh, hanging out with you guys. Let's have a fun day, and let's hopefully we can walk away with the win. It's going to be a tall order this weekend, but we're going give to it, give it one hell of a shot. In the end, if we're close, we might just send it send it real hard all right well final practice well final warm up in the book um spun myself out stay off the curbs cart felt really bad but we all knew that because the track was gonna be horrible no changes at all just put on some fresh rubber and really hoping that helps so qualified P3, uh, ecstatic, had a really good run in uh, qualifying with James Insko. Um, then got ahead of him and then pulled off a really fast lap, uh, put me P3. Um, started right behind Phil. We had closed the gap down. He's just a tenth uh, in front of us. Uh, the outside line really gets a really good run. Uh, the inside line actually gets kind of pinched off. Uh, we are very respectful and then uh, gave it, gave each other plenty of space. Um, and then I felt really good. Um my goal was just to hang with these uh, two guys up front um, and then just sit sit nose to tail in the pre-final and hopefully maybe make some moves or if James makes a move, I'll go with them. Uh, at this point in time, it's you know really early in the race, uh, no battling. We don't want to battle. Um, we just want to stay nose to tail lined up and then see if we can pull away from the rest of the pack. Uh, basically, that's exactly what we were doing and that's that was the plan of action. Um, right around after this lap, I noticed all of James's right-handers, the car started hopping really, really bad. And he started to get really, really tired. Something was up. Uh, the chassis did not look happy at all. And it, it was kind of uh, sluggish coming out of corners. So um, I didn't know what was happening with him. And uh, we were starting to drop Phil at this point. Um, we were already two to three laps into the race. Uh, I wasn't too worried, but we had a decent gap behind us. But his cart was just not happy. So I decided I need to make a move now. So I went for it. Later on, I found out that his uh, chain was rubbing up on the chain guard. So now I needed to learn. My goal was to see if I can suck up to Phil a little bit and then just learn where I'm losing. Um, basically, I sat right behind him for the rest of the race without pushing the cart too hard. Uh, I felt really good. And I noticed a couple of areas where he was quicker and a couple areas that i was quicker it looked like the front half of the track um from here on out he was just a little bit quicker his turn was a little better and then this right hander um the cart was just working better the back half of the track though after this section the double rights and that tight twisty section going out to the straightaway i was much quicker than him so now knowing that makes makes things a lot easier of when i can make moves or when i want to try to make a move uh this section right here my cart just did much better than his um, i was able to take the line a little better i gave up that double left a lot um, that first left i let off a lot and then coming on to the front straightaway uh pretty much even so um coming to this white flag i decided to see if i can suck up to him see how hard i can push the cart if there was really anything left in it um so i gave it everything i had this last lap to make sure if i could run him down um really felt really really good and we've been away from him the whole weekend we've been playing catch up so the new rubber chassis was working i was driving better i learned a lot after this section um really just coming alive and i was able to suck up hard on him and see how much i gained at this last second half of the track it felt really really good going into the finals um cart kept getting quicker and quicker i mean i was ecstatic so thanks to phil for showing me a whole bunch of new lines and tricks cart came alive um, we have something 
Um, this is a little mind game. Right when we passed uh, checker flag, he knew I was close. He looked back, saw that was there. So that's a little mind game. Get, trying to get into his head to rattle his cage a little bit. That's all. All right, guys. I know I've been lacking. Uh, sorry. Uh, qualifying went well. Uh, P3. Um, working with James Insko. Got a really good run. We've closed the gap down the field. Uh, I'm not. I'm sorry. Nothing's been recording because SD card was full, so I cleared that up. Uh, pre found did record. I hope um, you'll see there. Had a really good run. I was trying to push James up. Um, found out that his chain was rubbing on his uh, chain guard. So I, I, I went around him after a couple laps. Uh, I started running Phil down and then Phil showed me a couple lines uh, to improve my driving. He didn't know he did it until after he came off track. I said, thank you. So we'll see what happens in the final. If we had a good clean start, we'll get away well. Um, if I can't take the lead right away, just sit right behind him and make my move with the lap to go. Hope for the best. I'm not gonna ruin uh, someone's win or take someone out today. Tomorrow, different story. On to the final, starting P2. Just want a clean start, no accidents, no issues. And then my plan of attack was to take the lead early. I wanted to be the one controlling the pace. Um, and then I had a, a, a lap time set in my mind of what I wanted to hit. And I just wanted to hit those lap times. So uh, that was my goal. I usually don't do that. I usually want to um, basically sit behind someone until about halfway. If I see the halfway mark, I try to make a move. And if I can't make the move, then with two to go or one to go, then I try to take the lead. Um, but I was just going to sit behind Phil and see if I can take a lead. Um and see where maybe I could be a little bit quicker than him. Um, we can You can see here different lines. Uh, he attacks this corner a lot harder. Uh, I really back up the uh, double left to get a better run off this exit for the straightaway. So uh, different areas, we were doing different things, but you know lap, lap times were the same. Um, I felt really good after the first lap. My first three to four laps is always surviving until my tires come in. And then once the tires come in, I can drive the cart. A lot better uh, knowing that I was being this close to him at the very beginning of the race uh, felt really good the cart was working really really well uh, and then Phil was changing up his line that's what was the crazy thing I was running more of his line and he was doing something crazy on his own I don't know why but um, he makes a slight mistake uh, a little bit later on and it opens the door um, it was just enough for me to be like, okay, I can do it in this section. This is my money-making section of back half. He drove that double left a, hard, a lot harder than I did. I would back that corner up and make sure I get a really good run out to these two straightaways. But then turn one and two, I felt like he would just take a little bit better than me, and then he would open up the gap slightly. Um, he would just drive it in a lot harder and then make the cart work. And then the, from here on out, we're pretty much even at this section of the track. Um, it from here is just basically the same type of you know it, nobody was quicker than the other so I just felt that one turn one and two he was just a little bit better than me on that section of the track uh, you can see his cart uh, was not working to the best my cart slight push you had to use the rubber and if you got out of the rubber the car would do some crazy stuff um, that's when you start hunting for lines and making like slight adjustments I know it's hard while driving making some slight adjustments or changing up your line of hair to where your car likes it, where it works. Uh, the 484 gave me a big tank slapper coming on to the, uh, the front stretch. Uh, he was right behind me. So at that point in time, when I got that big tank slapper coming on to the uh, front straightaway, I was going to push real hard. I needed to get past Phil. At this point in time, the switch turned on. It was like, I cannot, I'm not going to be able to sit behind. I'm not sure how long he's going to be uh, relaxed. Uh, and then right there was the opening. Right when Phil dropped that tire, he made a massive mistake. And I knew his left rear was going to be was going to be shot. A right rear was going to be shot. So I got a really good run out where the section I was a little bit better. Um, I had basically uh, a tooth up on him. So I was able to carry that momentum out, coming out of the corner harder. And then from here on out, it was about managing the pace. Um... I would don't overheat your tires don't overwork your tires hit your mark have a lap time set in mind and just run those lap times 
lap after lap. You don't want any mistakes at all. Uh, from here on out, I was starting to pull maybe a tenth, a half a tenth a lap. Just I kept looking back and the gap kept getting growing bigger and bigger. And usually when that happens, the guy in third starts to get nervous because he, he, he sees the leader starts pulling away slowly. And that's what I needed. I needed the guy in third to start battling with Phil because you guys don't understand how much that makes a difference. The moment that he made a move on Phil, the race was over. The gap had grown too big that I know with two laps to go or one lap to go, they were not going to be able to run me down anymore. That's how big. That's how much fighting makes a difference. Two to go. The 484 got impatient, sent it on Phil. I look back. I have about eight carts, nine cart link gap. I knew that's all I needed. It was. It was just hit my marks. Make sure. Make sure nothing bad happened. You don't want to make a mistake. And then you start hearing everything. You start, you're hoping nothing breaks, nothing falls off. You're just hoping that everything holds on together for this final lap. I mean, at this point in time, I, I, I'm, I don't even know what I'm thinking. I just don't want to make a mistake. When I see the white flag, I'm in the lead. I have the gap. I went on cruise control just to make sure... We made it across the line. At this point in time, I was just, every single time, make sure you hit your line. Just got to hit the marks. It was insane. The thoughts going through my head, I just could not believe what was happening at this point in time. After this turn, I do a quick look I'm over my shoulder. I don't have to block. I don't have to do anything. I know I know the race is, is locked up. I just want to enjoy it as much as I can. I'm looking around, hitting these marks, and then I just remember coming out of this last corner, I look up on the bank, and I just cannot believe that I'm about to win Daytona. I'm about to win the sprint track. I'm about to take home the victory, the cup, the crown, and it just happens. I just can't believe I won Daytona. I am losing my crap in my helmet, um, an amazing race. Hands down to the competitors. Uh, it was a good job, good run. I was super happy. That was a loss for words, guys. It was just insane how good that run was. Unbelievable day. All right, guys. This is it. This is um, the combination of hard work. I don't think you guys understand. Uh, you know, like, uh, you guys just... There's sometimes it's hard to like vlog and and record and do everything because my main focus is winning. Vlogging is second, but I wanted you guys to be part of this journey with me. Um, back in 2016, I came to this event just so slow, far in the back, and six years of you know busting my tail and you know getting better in my driving, tuning all of it, and um, you know with all the help from the whole team. A uh, senior, uh, Daughtry, Chris, uh, ran into Mike Smoker last year, been running his gears, uh, always, you know, developing and, and, and trying different things. And, you know, he was like, you know, just put this gear on, you know, try this, this skip tooth crap that I'm doing. And it works. And just me, all these great people in this industry have, you know, I... I know some some people it's like oh it's just a trophy you know you just win whatever but to me I mean this is hard work paying off uh God thank this win to everybody that's helped me out um thanks to MGM chassis for making a great product uh Paul and April Rice uh thanks AEM uh engines for making the fucking amazing performance parts uh for amazing motor thanks uh smoker performance for the mini gear set I use uh, thanks to Caceres Marina for Rubens, all the fucking... Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then Chris ruined the video, baby! And, uh, in the end... I can put this song on for this video. Cause this is this is a third national win in a row. 
Third national in a row. We still got one more day. James Insko's coming. Phil Pickettero will be there. It's going to be hot. It's going to be heavy. We're going to get after tomorrow. We might party a little hard tonight, but I'll be there for qualifying. Cheers to you, Jorge, man. Congratulations. Awesome love today. Definitely not there for practice, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys on track. <laughs>